Okay, so this is the new version of MX Linux. It's a great operating system on the Pi. It's based on 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS Buster, and uh, the performance is excellent, especially on older devices, um, devices with lower RAM. So let's switch into screen capture. So this version came out on uh, February the 2nd this year, and uh, there's a load of changes in it. It definitely feels more stable and and more accessible. I, I loved the part of it that was very customizable and I loved the launches and things like that, but I found a few things uh, didn't work for me when I was testing it before. This version, I haven't had any of that, it, it is excellent. And if you wanna have a look at uh, Jerry Bond's channel, he's the lead for this project and uh, he always lets me know when there's a new update, which I really appreciate because it is a really nice operating system. Now hopefully in the future this could change to 64-bit, but the reason they've kept a 32-bit buster is it runs really well on the older Pis, um, but also it's got better compatibility at this stage, uh, certainly for all the maker side of it. Because this is based on Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, then it's incredibly compatible with pretty much everything that's out there for the Pi. So let's minimize this and just show you some of the things I really like. So if you press the Windows button, uh, you get this launcher, and if you just start typing in so if I start typing Raspberry, you can see Raspberry Pi configuration, Raspberry Pi config. If I type in imager, uh, and if I want to launch that, I just hit return, and it will launch that program. It also has an auto updater, which is down here. Uh, so you can see one new update available. That actually updated Raspberry Pi imager for me. Uh, well, it came up with the update, and I just had to upgrade it. So let's see what's uh, new here. Following packages will be upgraded RPI EEPROM. So let's do that upgrade anyway, let's let it do it. It's super, super fast. The login is Pi, the password is Pi. I'm not overclocked, which I think it probably says on the system information with Conkey on the right hand side. If I move this out of the way and close down imager, uh, so we can see uh, 1500 megahertz. So I'm not overclocked. This is my eight gig Pi, um, but this actually works really well on my two gig Pi as well. Uh, I haven't tried it on my one gig Pi because I don't tend to use it very much. So the updates are done, and you can see that it's there. Uh, we've got all this useful information down the bottom, so Bluetooth. Uh, there's a clipboard here as well, and this is something I was recently working on for RetroPie. We've got sound here. If I right-click that and open the mixer, you can switch between everything just as you normally would. So nice and easy to use. Uh, on the bottom right here, we've got power, uh, restart, and logout. I'll show a bit about logout in a minute. And the taskbar on the side here, uh, so you can see this takes screenshots. Uh, there's MX Tools, which is a quick way of getting into lots of the settings. So you can see here, and this is searchable as well. Uh, so say for instance, I wanted to go into Conkey. We have access to all of Conkey's various different things. So if we click on edit, uh, this will give us like a config and you can change little tiny bits about various different elements of Conkey. Uh, so all the sizes and fonts and various things like that. Um, but also, the one I really like is the Conkey Manager, which just allows you to switch straight between all of the different systems. So if I move this down the bottom here, and uh, let's just uncheck the one I'm running at the moment. So that is Sysinfo Conkey. And let's just go from the top and just flick through a few of them. So basically, um, this gives you system information straight off all configured, so you can see here I've got temperature and RAM and CPU usage and things like that. Just turn that off and uh, we have just a basic clock. And you can just flick through them and you can choose whichever one works for your desktop. And I just, I love this, the way that this is so quick and easy to do. And uh, I've used it in the past for sort of showing system information when I'm doing a video. Uh, it really, It really is a handy way of doing it, handy of having the temperature and things like that. So customizable. Look at this all along the top here. That quite like that one. Conky glass, nice big clock. Yeah, quite like that one. Quite like the temperature and all the icons and things like that. That's nice, nice and clear as well. And you can have two at once as well in some cases. So there's just a clock, two clocks. Nice audio one there for Dead Beef, which is the audio manager. Um, so that would show what was playing. I haven't got any music on this system at the moment. Again, nice and basic. Loads and loads of information. And there's so many more here. I won't go through all of them. Um, I'll just try and pick one that I really like and stick with that. This one's quite cool, the way it all links this up. I'll let people let me know in the comments what this symbol is about. I think I'll go with this one for now. Um, there was an Android phone that had uh, this symbol. I can't remember what brand it was, but they used this sort of thing on the display. And it just, 
It really made them look different to anyone else, uh, but I just can't remember what the make is now. Someone will let me know in the comments. Right, so let's leave it as that and close this down. Another way you can get into Conkey uh, is to right click and do things like appearance, and there's loads and loads of things you can do on here. So Conkey, that launches uh, this manager and you can go straight into it, so it's just another quick way of doing it. I'm a bit of a fan about this right click menu, it's just so handy, so all apps, recent files, uh, browser, so you can launch various different things, so say something like the file manager, but you can also get other things up as well. So there's a help section on, on here, straight into music, run, settings manager, terminal as well. Um, so a nice quick and easy way to go into that. Let's just do Neo Fetch while we're there. I'm running at 720 resolution, it runs fine at 1080, I just think for the video it makes it better because all the icons are bigger. And you would overclock this in exactly the same way uh, you would normally do a Raspberry Pi OS build. So if I right click again. Uh, so appearance, loads of things here. So you've got access to the docs. Uh, so Openbox, uh, I need to switch into Openbox in a minute. Uh, so loads of different styles you can switch into. Different themes. Different toolbars. Loads of wallpapers are in here as well. And if we go down the left hand side, uh, because I didn't go all the way down here before, so we've got Raspberry Pi configuration, so it's nice to have that on the desktop. Uh, and so this is a quick way to configure various different bits about your Raspberry Pi. It's the same sort of information in terminal you get when you put Raspi config. So we've got uh, task manager here, Featherpad as a text editor, and LibreOffice, another link to the terminal, VLC. That's the audio player, and you can see Firefox is the browser. There are also some help docs on the desktop, um, but they're in various different languages as well. Um, so uh, there's PDF files, various different bits of information, very, very useful. It's really, really polished now. Um, it definitely is a really nice operating system to use. And actually, I was always using it to uh, update and change various things with RetroPie. Um, it just, everything seemed really snappy, really accessible, really logical. Everything seemed to be in the right place as well. This is cool as well. So there's an out of sight option. Uh, so you can kill a dock, kill a window, uh, toggle con key, toggle eye desk, all sorts of things on here. So toggle icons, if I click on that, you can see it gives me a nice clean interface with no icons on the desktop. So I wanted to show the log app because that changes the window manager. So if I right click and leave, and then log out. At the top here, you can see I can click on this icon and I've got default X session, Fluxbox, and Openbox. So if I click on Openbox and type in the password of Pi and log in, here we have a different window manager. And if we right click on this, uh, this is called GCRL M. And you can see there's a few different things we can change on this as well. Um, but uh, I quite like it. Uh, so again, we've got time and date, we've got CPU usage, we've got the temperature. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, and this is, as you can see, incredibly lightweight as a desktop. Uh, there's very little on here. If I right click, uh, then we have a different version of this. Um, so the font is different. Nice font, actually. Nice and clear. So what happens if we put Conkey on this as well? So we can run two of these things at once. Although Conkey doesn't, um, they're not transparent. Look. I don't know why that is. That's probably adjustable. But on some of them, obviously, that would work. Yeah, so that bar kind of works like that. Uh, so if I was to close that down and then drag this out of the way if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, so if you wanted to do apps, well, let's see what happens if I press the Windows key. Ah, oh, so the Windows key doesn't launch that menu, but I can do all apps. And again, I can do, say, Raspberry Pi Imager and double click on that to launch that. So I don't know if I'd do away with all the icons all together, but I could see that some people would want that extra space on there. So if we call it the file manager. Yeah, it does work really nicely. Let's have a quick look at the web browser. So if we right click and browser, and let's try a bit of YouTube. Just see how well that plays back. And let's turn on stats for nerds. Okay, so not so great on 1080. Uh, let's lower that down to 720 and see how that runs. So 720 seems to be fine. Uh, doesn't seem to like 1080. Let's go back to 1080 and just give it another try. Does seem to be playing a little bit better now, but it's still a bit choppy. So I think it would really stick to 720. I wonder if I change the, um, the video driver and just, just give that a test. Let's have a look. So let's close this down. 
and uh, does control alt t work yes it does so sudo nano boot forward slash config dot text and let's have a look in here what setting it's on again i haven't overclocked or anything in here yeah it's the fake kms let's try turning on the um, kms driver and see if that makes a difference uh, so control x and yes and enter and then reboot okay so let's launch the browser again let's search for that video again yeah that seems smoother that does seem to have improved it a bit and you can see it doesn't seem to be dropping frames in the same way now and uh, I'm also not getting the tearing that I was getting before so yeah that, that definitely does seem to have improved it quite a lot right so let's come out of that and let's just do a few web searches so BBC Sport And let's see how quick it launches. Um, I, Firefox, I find, is is pretty snappy on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, considering the hardware that we've got, I think it, it works pretty well, yeah. And this being a lightweight operating system is definitely going to help. So let's do a quick search on Hot UK Deals. Yeah, it does, does seem to be pretty good uh, from a performance point of view because there's loads of photos and images and various different things on here. So great work by everybody involved. Uh, I really do like MX Linux. It's a great operating system and really, really pleasant to use. And thanks to Jerry Bond, the lead of the project, for letting me know about this. I'll put a link to his YouTube in the description. If you've got any questions specifically about this OS or suggestions, then I'm sure he'd appreciate them. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Hope all this helps. Please like and subscribe.